Our next guest here on Virginia This Morning teaches American literature and creative writing at the Appomattox Regional Governor's School in Petersburg. Her debut novel is called The Year of Needy Girls. It tells the story of how a young boy's murder creates sheer chaos in the life of a school teacher in a small New England town. We welcome Patricia A. Smith here to Virginia This Morning. Good morning and congratulations on the new book. Good morning and thank you for having me. What does it feel like to be the author of a debut book to actually see this years probably of work come to fruition? Well, it's a dream come true. It's something I've wanted my whole life since I was a little kid and something I've been working hard on for years. So it's pretty amazing. It's really incredible. Let's talk about the, 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 the start of this story, where it came from, because I was reading some of the press materials and, and they always say write what you know. And this kind of comes from something that you had heard about in a place where you used to live. That's right. So I used to teach, I've been teaching for 32 years. Long Congratulations. Time. <laughs> thank you. And thank you for your service. <laughs> um, and I was teaching in Cambridge, Massachusetts, and there was a young boy who was abducted, and he was sexually molested and murdered. He was 10 years old, and it was his next-door neighbor who did it. Um, and I was teaching fifth grade at the time, and my kids knew him. They played baseball with him and Little League and so forth, and they were terrified, as we all were, that this could happen. Um, and it happened with a neighbor. It was his next-door neighbor who abducted him and murdered him. So there was also a lot of fear in the LGBT community that um, because this was a young man who had abducted this boy and who had sexually molested him, that there would be backlash against the LGBT community. Um, and so I think that was always in the back of my mind when I was teaching in this sort of palpable fear that we had in, in Cambridge at the time um, and with my students. And I thought I wanted to explore that in a book. So how does this turn around and, and uh, become the basis of your book? Kind of give us now what your book is about. So one of the things that I was thinking about originally when I started writing the book is how homophobia can tear apart a family. Um, and it turns out that really the book is focused on how it tears apart a town. Um, so I started thinking about this teacher, because I guess I have had right, that what experience, you know. uh -huh. right, what I know. Um, and she becomes falsely accused of, of having a relationship with a student. And because this murder has happened in the town, there's already a big uproar. Um, people, even though she's a beloved teacher, people um, are out to get her. There's a town meeting. They, they want to get, there's an outcry to get rid of all gay teachers, to get rid of all gay adults who are working with students. And I think it's something that even though we live in more accepting times, perhaps, it's still a fear and it's still a possibility that could happen. Let's talk about the title of the book, The Year of Needy Girls. It kind of has a, a, a couple of different meanings it in the does. book. It does. It does. Um, because first of all, there are the girls, Deirdre Murphy is the protagonist and she teaches at an all-girls private school. Brandywine Academy, um, and so there are her girls, her students, who she feels sometimes are pretty, as students can be, needy. Uh, they need her emotionally, they need her intellectually, um, and she thrives on that in a way that probably isn't very good, isn't very healthy for her or her students. Um, and then, of course, there's Deirdre herself and her partner, SJ, who themselves are also needy, mm -hmm. um, and who also um, probably uh, are needy in a way that, are, that that is not good for them either as adults. They, they act like kids sometimes. Mm -hmm. As a writer, it's interesting because for this book you've created characters, which writers do, but you've also created a fictional town, mm -hmm. you've created a school, you've created really a world of your own. That's right. That's right. And it's one of the joys of being a fiction writer is that you get to imagine what a world could be like. Mm -hmm. And you get to um, imagine what, what other people might be like what they might, you know, what they might do. I talk to my students a lot about it, and um, we like to think of uh, characters that certainly have parts of ourselves in them, mm -hmm. but they're also people that we might like to be, people that we're afraid of being. It's it's really it's really a fun it's really a fun task. Now that you have a first published novel, does that give you a little bit more cachet with your students? I don't know. You'll have to ask them. <laughs> I'm, I'm unsure about that. And, and as far as creative writing and working with young people, mm -hmm. um, what's the main thing that you try to teach them and, and tell them when they're trying to, to create stories for themselves? That's a good question. Um, well, we talk a lot about, uh, for them, I think, telling their stories, the stories that matter to them, is what's most important. Um, I think sometimes young people aren't given a lot of attention, they're not taken very seriously, and so it's really, really important for them to tell the stories that are near and dear to their heart. So um, I feel really privileged to be able to do that, and um, um, it's one of the best jobs you can have. It is, and we thank you again for being a teacher. Oh, now that you've got one novel out, out under your belt, do you have another in the works or done I do, already? Not done yet, but it's in the works, um, and I do think that a little bit 
um, having one book gives you, or gives me anyway, a little more confidence, I think, to, to push on with the second book. So. And what are you hoping people will feel and, and think when they read The Year of Needy Girls? Um, well, first of all, I hope they enjoy the story. I hope they find that it's a, a page turner and it's enjoyable, but I hope that they think a little bit about what it's like to be a teacher, uh, maybe specifically what it's like to be an LGBT teacher, um, the, the challenges that we face and the challenges that um, you know, we face in the world, not just in the classroom. But mostly I hope they enjoy it. Well, the book is called The Year of Needy Girls by Patricia A. Smith. Thank you so much for coming in today. Thank you. And we wish you the best of luck with the book.